If you're like me, coding all day eventually gets tiring. You want to be doing some art, you want to be doing some design. You can't always have your brain focused when you're working so hard on making games after work. Now with the sudden growth of the channel and the community we've built, we're really lucky to have a bunch of artists just hanging out with us and we learn some very good tips from every day. Just a little side note before we get right into the video, I'd like to thank La Fluff uh, on Discord. She's been doing the art for the Subway Skater and also some other stuff such as the portal assets. Uh, you're going to be seeing that on the channel quite soon. So a quick thank you to her and I'd like to do a disclaimer for the rest of the video. We're not uh, professional artists, we have not found the magic artist fountain. Those tips might work on you, they might not work with you. We just, we just like, we enter those problems every day so <laughs> we gotta find a way to resolve them and we're going to share with you our tips that we do personally to actually get inspired. So let's jump right into the meat of this video. Solution number one, references. This one has to be the personal favorite of a lot of people. Hell, if you've been following the channel, we've been literally cloning game since the start. Not that I'm so proud of that, but it did get us started. And if you've been playing game for as long as I have, you'll probably be that old and annoying guy making constant references to art you've experienced before, like, oh yeah, these are the trees in Elwyn Forest, or this game looks like Benjo Kazooie. Truth to be told, most of the thing you're going to see are exact copies or a little bit of variation in the copy or multiple reference mashed together. So go out there, find your favorite piece of art, find out why it works, and also try to recreate it. Now, <laughs> sometimes you try to create something that is uh, too high level for you to accomplish, like I'm, I'm just a noob artist and I'm trying to do something that looks really good, like one of those shots from uh, World of Warcraft, I remember a really good ambience in that certain scene. I try to recreate it and I do it all wrong, but it leads to something else. So I try to recreate the scene, I try to draw it, it doesn't even look the same but it gives me more idea on how I can do a variation of it. So that's something that happens to me most of the time and that's only because I suck. But pretty good, uh, pretty good idea. To wrap up the solution, just take something that already exists out there and try to recreate it. See if you can uh, either be so bad that you create something new or you can like, you know, tweak some color, change the environment setting something or maybe even just play with the colors. Number two is to play, and that's a play with big quotes, because if you're trying to write a book, maybe you don't want to play a game, even though that would work very good, but if you're trying to write a book, read other books, try to find out why what they do works, try to read something popular if you're trying to make a game, play something that's good, play something that is popular, that attracts other people, and just try to find out why it does that, and mash these elements in your game. And that's it for this one. It's nothing magical, it's something that is really common sense, but if somebody finds something that works, it might also work for you. Um, not saying that you should clone games that are already popular, like something niche, but something that you're going to see across multiple games could work. Number three is audio, and that's a really good way to get inspired. Get immersed in the piece you're trying to build, uh, try to feel it. You still don't know how this environment is going to look. How about you pick an ambient sound first? Here's some leaking pipe some cracking sound, model some pipes, a dirty sink, very low lighting, broken chair, creepy wallpaper, and maybe even a Chinese doll, because that song is spooky and you want to be making your environment spooky. So you see how that works? You have your song first and then you just model from it, or you write from it. You try to just feel it first and then what do you see when you hear that song? Another example is this video, so I had no clue how to start this video. Therefore, I went on my favorite royalty-free music website, which I can only <laughs> download stuff for free there because I'm a freedom partner. If you'd like to be a freedom partner and uh, have access to the same song, you can um, just apply in the description down below. All you need is about three or four or five videos that work good, about 10,000 views. You need a little bit more than that, I think. But uh, just give it a try, apply there, and uh, if you have your channel approved, you can actually have all these songs for free and a lot more stuff that's on there. Anyway, back to the video. So I went on this website and I start listening to songs one by one until I find one I liked and as soon as I did I put it at the beginning of my track and I modeled my video around it. So audio first and then you just model whatever you need after that. If it's a creative piece then you just try to feel it, just try to immerse yourself in it. Alright, next. Number four is culture and culture is a little bit odd because if you've never really exit your place then you still don't know how that works, maybe you got, you got it through movies but <laughs> the way people behave over there is so much different. Even just a glimpse of Japanese culture you get from anime, even though it's really exaggerated, can still give you a lot of inspiration. 
especially those buildings. Those buildings are amazing looking. Number five is Dreams. And I know not everybody is big on this one, but it has been uh, something very inspiring for me, so I'm going to share it anyway. Your subconscious has some crazy ideas out there. It has some crazy landscape, crazy stories, crazy behavior from other people, and maybe even yourself. And maybe even experiences. If you're doing lucid dreams, maybe you start flying, you start trying out stuff, teleporting, all that kind of stuff. So if you just manage to remember your dream a little bit more, you could try and implement those in your environment you're creating, in your writing, in your games. This is something that has been really powerful for me, and I hope it is for you as well. Now, if you'd like to have some kind of uh, tips before we get started, because I know most of the people that are going to be watching this, they don't remember the dream, right? So the best tip I can give you is to go to bed by... Um, just go to bed and remember to yourself. Keep telling yourself that you need to remember your dream. That's going to, to give you a little bit of edge when you start waking up in the morning. So you're going to start remembering your dream a little bit more. On top of that, just carry your dream journal around and write it down. Once you wake up, you remember your dream, write down every single detail you can remember and try to read it during the day so you can remember your dream after. Just by doing this, it's going to be a little bit of training for your brain and your brain is eventually going to remember dreams without having you taking notes. So you'll be in front of your computer and you'll be able to remember this sick environment you've been living through. Number six is kind of a little bonus for me, it's something that I really enjoy doing and I might sound like a kid when I say that, but I like to project myself into pretty much anything. Whether it exists or not, um, I like to project myself, say, in this cat, for some reason, and just take yourself, like, take a perspective in that cat's brain. So try to put yourself in this cat little brain and see how things are big around you so how this desk is so much bigger than what we perceive it so that could be perfect for a parkour game maybe you're chasing fly maybe you're collecting nuggets you're drinking water when you're out of stamina the main player has some super jump abilities and night vision it is such a blast of a game you can do that anywhere at any time just try to project yourself into something else have especially the sizing i found myself that the sizing part of it is so much fun Put yourself in an insect, how everything is so much bigger, so what do you see on the floor, what are all these things, what can you interact with since you're so small. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video guys. If you enjoyed this, if you had some ideas that you liked, go ahead and leave a like on the video right here. And of course, please use the comment section down below to share your tips, because 6 is not enough to cure all the blank canvas syndrome out there. So guys, share with us your tips, um, make sure you join us on Discord as well if you'd like to talk more, if you'd like to interact with us directly. We're on the scored most of our life. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll be catching you in the next video. Cheers.